at 9.30 here on BBC Two. Now, you'll know that the American bank Lehman Brothers collapsed a year ago, which, as we know, kicked off a chain of events which also helped to contribute to thousands of job losses in the city. Well, now, two investment bankers who lost their jobs actually used it as an opportunity to set up their own business, and then they emailed us to tell us about it. So, here's their story. Hi, I'm Ian Myers, one half of the London tailoring firm Cad and the Dandy. And I'm James Sleater, the other half. And just a year ago, we were both suits in the city, now we're making suits for the city. The customer's got quite a pronounced drop right shoulder. The normal shoulder pad is. Well, we, we started Cam and Dandy really for, for two different reasons, but the, but the same reason. I'm quite tall, and uh, James here is a little on the shorter side, but neither of us can actually buy anything off the shelf that fitted. Um, so, on the tailoring market, it's either outrageously expensive, or if you do buy the lower end, it's very poor quality. And what we want to offer is something that is good quality, um, but at a reasonable price. The one thing I absolutely love, though, is, like that, is the hand stitching going around the edge. Yeah, so before I was an investment banker, my uh, day job was basically trading. Um, so incredibly different from, you know, measuring someone's inside leg. And down again? And luckily, I um, got made redundant about a month before I was going to leave anyway. So it was a perfect opportunity to then take the redundancy yeah, pay, set the company up and then launch it. And then a few months later, James got uh, made redundant as well and jumped on board. Yes. So the, uh, the credit crunch came pretty much at the right time for us. We have three locations across London, but rather than having three shops, at the moment, we actually have three offices. It means that our costs are so much lower, we're not paying for a shop front, a big window with our name above it. Uh, just helps keep our pricing uh, of our suits much lower because our overheads and outgoings are so much lower. Yeah, we want to do something that other tailors don't have, and tailoring world isn't the most, um, let's say, cutting edge. So we've developed a website where you can actually go online and you can design your suit to your suit yourself. So a lot of our customers come in before they have their measurements taken, and they've got a really good idea of what they want from their suit. I, I think w one of the big things you've got to prepare yourself for when you're starting a business is you're going to go without salary and you're used to having a salary and a good lifestyle and suddenly you've really got to cut back so you've got to be prepared for that. that that's been the biggest challenge is the, 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 the change in lifestyle. You'll get a second email from us in about six weeks. Okay. Click on the link and make an appointment for your fitting. I would definitely advise anybody thinking about it to start up their own company. You invariably work far longer hours, have a different form of stress but you also get so much more enjoyment in controlling your own destiny. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's good to create something. We put. Um, a little stamp on the map. We did a, we did a couple of fitting days. Uh, well, uh, James is still with us, of course, and Judy Meyer's here. Uh, you're an investor, you've set up your own business, you're even uh, involved in an online version of Dragon's Den as well, so you know a thing or two about what these guys uh, have gone through. If you've got a great idea for starting up a business, like they did, mm -hmm. How do you get it off the ground? What are the first things you need to do? You really have to get down to business planning pretty quickly. So a lot of people approach business with passion and gusto and energy, and that's all great. You need that too. But you've got to look at two things, your ability to sell something, a product and a service, and build a pipeline very concretely and say, how many calls to sell one unit? And then your fixed costs. What are you going to use for a, a laptop and a telephone and all of the things? And there's so many different ways that you can overspend at the beginning. So the more you, you put it into a spreadsheet, simple, simple, but just um, put into a spreadsheet what those costs are going to be. And you know, pretty quickly, you've got to have your revenues covering your costs or you have a problem and you need outside finance. And then I would say get your financial uh, world in order. A lot of people approach business um, and they've got, you know, maxed out credit cards and, you know, all sorts of things going on and so forth. You've got to have a tidy financial house, some um, stability there, and then it's all down to the business planning. Once you have the business plan in place or you have your idea in place, often you need help. I mean, I, yeah. I know these guys were lucky enough to be able to do it on their own, but mm. who can you pitch to? Yeah. Well, there's lots of organizations. First of all, you, um, people tend to have people that are in their midst that would be a business mentor if they would only ask them. So I would say don't be shy. There's people that you've known for the past 10 years that would probably help you with that, and you need to ask them. There's good organizations like Business Link. We've set up Entrepreneur Country. There's other organizations where, um, you know, uh, there's help to be found, if you will, and you just need to kind of do a, a Google search, find these organizations, reach out to people you know, but 
but overall you can't be shy about asking for help. A lot of people kind of languish in the corner and they don't know what to do and they don't do anything about not knowing what to do. Speak to your bank manager as well. Re, you know, the bank manager tends to be a good source of help. Uh, we'll talk to the bank manager in just a second, but it is now a good time to do it? Is now a good time to start? Absolutely. Um, although we may be pulling into a recovery, we all hope so. Um, now's the time to set up a business because you, can, you, you tend to be able to hire people in a little bit better compensation from an employer's perspective. Um, and, you know, there's, there's less competing ideas out there and so forth. Some of the best businesses in the world have been built in recessions. Mm. Okay, thanks, Julie. Um, if you want to start your own business, we are seeing and James for their top tips as well. Just keep your costs low. Uh, if, if you're starting up, keep your costs low. It gives you a fighting chance because it will take a time to get the business up and running for people to know your name. So if you keep your costs low, then you've got a good chance of succeeding. Uh, my top tips for starting up a business would be use your contacts and, and friends. Our, an example would be our website was built by a friend of mine. It meant that he gave us a better price, gave us a referral on who to use as a photographer, and never be too afraid to ask people for help. And lastly, I'd say remember marketing. So marketing and sales, if you haven't got any uh, income coming in, you're never going to make a business. It's odd they say marketing because marketing is often seen as an expense rather than uh, an investment in the future. Well, not only is it the precursor to sales, you've got to you know, take your product to market, but it's an important feedback loop. You have to understand if people are telling you no, you need to listen carefully. Why are they saying no? They might be interested, but you don't close the sale. So why is that? And marketing is really that feedback loop back into developing and refining your product or service. And James, when guys like that come looking for money, what do you think? Well, we've got, I mean, from the banking side, we've, we've got loans. We also developed the first um, social venture capital fund in, in, in the country. And so there, there's lots of other ways of supporting. Really, what you have to kind of look for is that the, the management team have covered all the bases. I completely agree in terms of really getting close to the customer. If you really can understand what, what the, the, the customer wants in a sort of a, in a more of a holistic perspective, then I think that, that you've got something which, which has got legs. And we've heard often from small businesses, from individuals, entrepreneurs, that the banks aren't offering enough help. How has the banking crisis affected your attitudes now to new business or new ideas? Well, I think that we, we've always been supported and we've been able to kind of support because we've, we've been uh, avoided a lot of the kind of the problems that other banks have got in.